Okay, let's talk about the Mantis II and its dive function. All of you watching this are probably a scuba diver, and uh, if you've got a Mantis II, uh, first, thank you for purchasing one. You're going to love it. And number two is uh, I want to show you where the meat and potatoes is of being able to use this for your dives. So if we scroll through the menu until we get the cursor to line up on dive on the outside bezel, around the uh, 2 o'clock uh, setting on your bezel, you'll notice that you've got the uh, dive mode. And as soon as you go in there, first thing you're going to see is what you set it for last. So if that was scuba, it's going to be in the scuba mode. If it was set for gauge or set for apnea or any of these features, that's what's going to be left on the screen. So that's nice because if you don't free dive or if you mainly free dive, you can leave it in the setting that you most often use. In this case, it's going to show me that it's scuba. I also have my time of day here, which is, is on the middle of the screen. And if I take the select button, do a light press, the first option I'm going to get is gas. So if we think about this, this is probably going to be the thing you're going to change the most often is going to be your nitrox. So all you'd have to do when you've got your Mantis 2 on, scroll till you line up the cursors with the dive, do a light press, and the very first option you have is to change your nitrox mix, which is going to be really handy. If I do a light press on that, I'm now going to have the, the it go into gas mode, and it's going to show me what percentage that I have, and it'll say right at the bottom, gas 1. You'll see that in this particular case, because we've just been using this watch for, for demoing, it shows that we're at 29%. It would have a maximum operating depth of 129 feet, and I've got a PO2 or a partial pressure of oxygen of 1.4. If I do a light press on the select again, then my 29 is going to start flashing. So my 29%, I can now scroll down to 21 for air, and I can scroll it all the way up to 100%. Of course, you're probably going to use somewhere between 21, 32, and maybe 36%. In this case, if I ran it down to 21, you'll notice that my maximum operating depth changed to 193 feet. So with 21% at 193 feet, I would have a PO2 of 1.4, and this would be gas 1. If I go up to 32, which is the gas that I generally use when I dive, it's going to drop down to 114 feet with a PO2 of 1.4, or I would have a PO2 of 1.4. Okay, let's lock that in. So let's just press the select button. Now it will give you the opportunity to adjust the PO2 if you wanted it to be higher or lower. In this case, I would keep it at a 1.4. That's a good safe uh, percentage. Now if I press the up button, next thing it's going to off offer me is to change gas 2. Remember, this is a three gas computer. With a three gas computer, you can have a gas that you would use for travel, one that you would use for uh, the bottom, and then you could have one you use for decompression. Or you could have two decompression gases. Remember, this is a nitrox-only computer, so it would be three different nitrox mixes or air and two nitrox mixes. Next, you'll see your gas D. In this case, it's already set for a 1.6 PO2. In most cases, people would be using either a 50% nitrox or 100%. In this case, if I press select, it's going to be flashing up at the top. I have nothing there now because I didn't have gas D set. I can quickly hit the plus button and go all the way from 32 to 100, or I could just hit the minus button once and it would start at 100% and work its way backwards. In this case, it's going to tell me 100%. I have a maximum depth of 21 feet. It would be 1.6 using this gas at this depth, and this is gas D. So let's lock that in. Now, the next mode when I push the, the plus button is it says CCR. In this case, I have CCR turned off. If you're diving a closed circuit rebreather and you're properly trained on one of these, this can be a great backup device to where you can set a constant PO2 to mimic the controlling computer on your CCR, and it would just give you a backup for your decompression calculations as well as if something was to happen with the, the primary computer that's telling you the, the decompression information. So again, just to back up to what you've got for your CCR, it's not actually physically tied to it, so it can't read what's going on in the CCR, but you would set that up as a constant PO2 for the bottom and for the decompression phase of your, of your dive, and you can have this be a backup. Next, we've got gas reset. This is a feature that we put in mainly for the, uh, the rental world or for people in the islands or places where they are, may have multiple users renting a computer during the day. So this was designed so that if you had more users using it during the day or if you're just renting on a daily basis, that you could set the computer so it defaults to air over a set period of time. For instance, if you taught a nitrox class tonight, 
you were renting out your M2 computers and people set them for 32%, you would want it to go back to 21% tomorrow where air divers may be coming in and renting the same computer and not knowing about setting and changing the percentage of oxygen. So it's a nice feature, not that commonly used for individuals, but great for, for dive resorts. Next feature is you've got a halftime alarm. You can actually have the, the computer beep at you and tell you when you're at half a tank. So if you've got a tank that's full and you want to know when you're at about half your tank so that you can start planning your return back to the boat or your return back to shore, this is a nice feature that it will alarm for you and let you know. Next is you've got a tank reserve. You can adjust this from as low as 600 PSI to almost as high as you want as far as when you want the computer to alarm and let you know that it's time for you to be heading up. Keep in mind that all of our computers that use a transmitter are going to do what we call work of breathing or remaining breathing time. They're going to actually calculate your gas consumption, the amount of time that you're, that you're underwater, and it's going to give you a time that that gas is going to allow and get you back on the surface with this tank reserve that you programmed in. So for instance, if I said I wanted to be on the surface with 600 PSI, on the bottom it's going to give me a number or a time and let's say it's down to like 800 and it starts beeping and telling me that I need to be heading up. With the proper ascent rate, my safety stop and everything, I would then get back on the surface with 600 PSI because it's calculating as much as a quarter of a PSI change in my gas consumption. So it's very accurate. Next we've got the pairing. If you're using the transmitter, you need to get the transmitter and the Mantis 2 to talk to one another. So later we're going to show you how to pair this. It's really, really simple. And once you pair the Mantis 2 to the Scuba Pro transmitter, these guys are in communication kind of from then on. Until you have to change a battery on one of the two, you don't have to repair it before every dive. It's always going to remember the setting that you had before. You simply just have to turn it on and, and get the two to talk to each other and know that they're reading the pressure in your cylinder. So we'll walk you through that a little bit later. Now we're back to the gas setting. If I continue from the gas setting and do a light press on my plus again, the next thing you're going to see is the word scuba. If I do a select under scuba, first thing I'm going to see is a depth warning. It's going to say off at the top in this case because I have it turned off. In this case the last was 115 and then warning. I can actually set the computer to alarm for me when I get to a specific depth. This is really a handy feature. So for instance, a minute ago I said that I had 114 feet was the maximum operating depth for my 32% nitrox. I could set this to alarm at 100 feet if I wanted so that I know that I'm getting close to my threshold of where I shouldn't be staying very long or going any deeper with this percentage of nitrox. So I can use that as a handy feature. Next button, if I push the plus button, is going to be a time warning. In this case, I have it turned off again. It shows 60 minutes and it shows warning. I can set this for, for how long I want my dive to last. The typical dive that we do in Florida is usually going to be 40 minutes to an hour. So you could go in based on what the boat captain tells you that he wants you guys back on the boat in a certain amount of time. You could say 60 minutes. At 30 minutes, the Mantis 2 is actually going to beep at you and let you know you're at half your time. This is wonderful if you're a dive master or a dive guide because you can actually take people on the guide, show them the different creatures, and it, the alarm's going to go off and let you know when you need to be heading back. Half your dive going away from the boat or away from the shore, and then start your return back. So a really great feature that we've got built in. That's, it's actually automatic once you set this time. Next, you've got your micro bubble levels. Remember, with part of our adaptive algorithm and Scuba Pro's uh, biometrics and human factors, we're looking to take into consideration as many personal things as possible when it comes to using our computers. In this case, with the micro bubble levels, L0 is our standard eight tissue adaptive algorithm that we've, we've been using since, since the 80s. So with this micro bubble levels, we can actually adjust from level zero, which is the standard, up to five different levels. So one through five are levels of conservatism that you can program in for human factors that the computer can't really detect. For instance, age or fitness. If you've been sick, if you uh, just haven't been diving in a long time, anything that makes you want to be a little bit more conservative, you can put in these different factors. If you put in, say, an L2, and during the dive, it's giving you a micro bubble level stop. In other words, it's telling you to come up off the bottom and start heading up. If you wanted to ignore that because you're busy shooting a photograph of a, of a beautiful turtle or something, then you could ignore it and it would default down to a level one. 
This is going to beep at you in flash. Remember, those audibles are to make you look at it, and then it's going to tell you the story. It's going to say, hey, you've hit your microbubble level. But if you decide to ignore the microbubble level, it's going to just scroll down to the other level below that. Obviously, you can't go below L0 because L0, those numbers are telling you no decompression and then decompression. So if when le level zero tells you you need to be heading up off the bottom, you need to be heading up or you will be going into a decompression dive. The micro bubble levels don't penalize you after the dive if you ignore them. They simply give you suggestions based on you wanted some more conservative uh, ideas about how long you should stay and it's going to suggest them to you. It's up to you whether you take advantage of it or not. It's another great factor that we have built into our watches that help you understand how you can make the diving more about what you're doing personally or who you are personally on the dive. Next you're going to see fresh water. Here we can set it for fresh or salt just by pressing the select button. It's going to flash. Plus or minus is going to change it from salt to fresh and then we lock it in. Remember that will have a small difference when you're looking at your PO2 and what your MOD is. When you set your nitrox, you look at your partial pressure. If you're set for fresh or soft, that'll change that just slightly. So if there's a difference between you and your buddy's settings, that may be it. Now we're back to scuba. Another nice light press, and we're going to go into the apnea mode. In the apnea mode, we've got first screen is going to say total sessions. In this case, in a minute, I'll have it turned off. Total sessions would be if you, you and your buddy decided you wanted to go out and do an apnea day, and you, of course with apnea diving, it's a little different from scuba diving. Scuba diving will usually do one or two dives during a day. Apnea divers tend to do lots of dives during the day. So they're on the surface, they're free diving down, they're coming back, spending seconds or minutes on the surface and doing that multiple times. They're trying to improve their, their breath holding, they're trying to improve their depth that they can reach. And so you can have a total number of sessions. So let's say that you wanted to have 100 feet, you could set and do a 10 foot dive, and then do a 20 foot dive, and then do a 50 foot dive. And now all of a sudden when you do another 30 foot dive, it's going to tell you that you've hit that 100 foot or total sessions of how far you wanted to, to penetrate in your multiple apnea dives. So it's a really great feature. Now you've got surface interval. You can have it where it will alarm or you can just set different times for how long you want to stay up between dives. So if you wanted to be doing your, your breaths and focusing on your next dive, instead of having to sit there and use the watch and, and watch the time, you could actually preset this to alarm you and tell you that one minute or three minutes that you've been up, it could go off and you'd be ready to do another apnea dive. You've got depth alarms. You can set it so that you want to have an alarm to tell you when you've reached the depth that you set out that day to try to obtain. So whether it's over several dives or during each dive, you can have an alarm at the depth when you reach it, which could be a great feature for you building your confidence and your skill level. Next we've got depth increment alarm. You can actually have it set so that it gives you an alarm at say every 10 feet that you go down. So without you having to look at, at the uh, Mantis 2, you could be descending, it's going to alarm at 10 feet alarm at 20 feet, alarm at 30 feet, and it could even do it as an ascent alarm as well to where it can do the overall alarms for descending and ascending in whatever increments that you would like. Next we're going to have the surface interval for a multi-surface interval so that if you wanted to do a dive and come up and it automatically default and do an alarm for the next surface interval, it would do that each time that it gets less than three feet of water. It would start automatically calculating that surface interval for you. We actually even have a low pulse rate. One of the original concepts behind us using the heart rate monitor was with our apnea mode. We knew when we had it in our biometrics for the Galileos years ago that it was a great feature for helping us uh, calculate the dives and the accuracy based on the individual user. But for apnea, it's really important that we get our heart rate to slow down as far as possible. We've got an actual low pulse alarm to where you can set it. Obviously, you can see your heart rate in general, but you can also have it so that if you get to an area that you think that might be too low, that it's going to give you an alarm based on what you're experiencing by watching your heart rate numbers. And then you can have an ascent speed even. If you want to make sure that your ascent is going at a set speed, so that you can come up as slow as you need to, this is a good way to use this. You set the alarm, you try to maintain that speed. If you get outside the range of that speed, it's going to beep and you know that you can slow your ascent or increase your ascent. Okay, so that's all the features in the apnea mode. The next mode is going to be our user mode. 
the user mode is where you can set the, the, the unit to be specific for you. So if I go into the user mode, this is where I would actually set my heart rate uh, parameters. So I'd set my heart rate high and I could set my heart rate load here. So I've got, in this case, I have a heart rate high of 170 and I have a heart rate low of 60. And then I can have it where it sets to, to default, whether it's my work of breathing with the transmitter or if it's the heart rate as to default to whichever one is highest. Next, I've got units. Here I can adjust it PSI or bar. I can have Fahrenheit, Celsius. I can have feet and meters or any combination of the above. If you like to use meters, but you think more in uh, Fahrenheit, uh, you can set it that way. So whatever personalization you want as far as your uh, imperial or metric. Next is your backlight. This is a little bit different from the, uh, the compass setting we spoke about earlier and definitely different from our Galileo in that the maximum time that you can set the backlight to stay on is going to be 30 seconds. The reason for this is because we wear it during the day as a watch. In my case, I wear a watch 24-7. If I was to move my arm in such a way, or based on what I'm wearing, if I was to activate the light button, I wouldn't want to have a push on like we can have on the Galileos or that we have in the compass setting, because then my light would be on and in a bright daylight environment, I wouldn't notice it and it would run my battery down. So we've got a maximum of 30 seconds that we can keep the backlight on. And of course, you can just push the button and restart that again. Next, we have desaturation. Desaturation, again, was, was designed with the resort and the dive operation in mind. This allows the multiple users in a single day. For instance, I could go diving in the morning on a dive boat in the, in the islands and do a dive, have a great time, come back, and if they wanted to let someone else use the computer because they didn't have as many M2s in, in uh, rental that day as what they needed, they could actually come in and program a special code that you'll find in your manual, and they could clear the desaturation. My dive would still be in the logbook, but the person wanting to use the dive for the, the M2 for the second dive wouldn't be penalized by my residual nitrogen. They would have basically a fresh Mantis II ready to go diving. So it's a great feature for multiple users, and you'll find this in all of our Scuba Pro computers. Next after user is going to be swim mode. Again, as part of our uh, desire to create a multi-watch, multi-function watch for you guys, We've added a swim feature in several of our watches of recent age, and this allows you to be able to go to the, the gym or go to the quarry and be able to calculate distance. In a pool, it can be pretty easy, but if you go swimming in a lake or quarry, it's pretty far, hard to know how far you swim. So you can set this for one of two ways. It can either be kick strokes, where you would actually mount the Mantis II on your ankle, turn it on, and it would actually count your strokes. And if you know the distance that you travel per stroke, you could count it that way. Or you could put it on your wrist, calculate the reach and the depth, and it will calculate how far you go by using those parameters. So again, part of like our sport mode, we've got the ability to use it as an exercise function or just a great feature for you to be able to get some knowledge that you may not have of how far you're swimming when you go to the lake or the river or the quarry. Next, you'll see SCUBA, and then you say ALGOs. This is our algorithm. In this case, we can quickly scroll through by pushing the select button. I can pick SCUBA, hitting the plus or minus button. I could go to gauge mode. I could go to apnea, or just stay in the regular mode that I was already in. In this particular case, we notice that there's gauge mode in here. Gauge mode is the ability for you to use the M2 to calculate your depth your time, you can have your heart rate, your stopwatch, everything, but we pretty much disconnect the algorithm. In other words, it's not calculating the, the math of gas loading because we say that we don't want it to do that. We simply want it to be calculating the dive as far as the depth and time. And this is usually used by technical divers that are using mixed gases and, and multiple gases who want to be able to cut a set of tables on a software program, be able to carry that in their pocket and use whatever gases they want during the dive, but be able to know the depth, the time, have the backlight, have the compass, have the heart rate, but not use the algorithm part because they're using another form for calculating their decompression. When in gauge mode, you also have the advantage that it is going to calculate the dive. You can download it and you can see exactly what you did later. Okay. So this is our dive function. You can see there's a lot of great features, but they're all designed to make your diving safer, more fun, and to have everything you need in one device.